Hey everyone, in this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you the process that I use to quickly identify the number and quality of backlinks needed to rank a given piece of content. And this is gonna help you prioritize where your backlinks can have the biggest impact, as well as provide a more accurate idea of how many you need to build now in order to rank, as well as how many you need to be building on an ongoing basis to remain competitive. So let's jump in. Okay, I'm gonna be using my article targeting the best SERP trackers as a working example to illustrate this process. This is an important keyword for my blog, which monetizes primarily through affiliate revenue. I can see here that the article hasn't been updated in close to a year since the time of this recording. So it's a perfect opportunity for a content refresh and to run this exercise and see how many backlinks I might need to build to this article in order to get it ranking higher in the search results. So what I would do now, since I'm in the top pages report, I can simply grab the main primary keyword or the one with the most volume behind it and simply right click open in a new tab and it's gonna bring me into the keyword explorer overview report here for that specific keyword. And then what you wanna do is just simply scroll down to the SERP overview report. Now I can see here that if I could rank in the top five positions for this keyword, I'd likely triple the amount of organic traffic to the article, which would potentially generate more referrals and affiliate commissions from the blog. So the first thing you wanna focus on here is this referring domains column. Now this number can be misleading at times. It's often gonna be a lot higher than the actual number of links that you need to rank. So what you wanna do in this report is focus in on a domain that has a similar domain rating score. It's ranking with a similar content type. So in my case, it would be a blog post content type in a listicle format and pick out the one that has the lowest domain count as this is gonna allow you to compare Pair apples to apples as much as possible and get the lowest feasible link count. So an example of this could be Marketing Arsenal. I can see here they've got a domain rating of 56. That's actually lower than my current domain rating of 70. So that's a good sign. They also have a blog content type in a listicle format, just like my article. Now I can see here that they have 92 referring domains compared to my 11. And I wanna see, do I really need another 81 links in order to rank highly for this asset? So what I'll then do is I'll just right click on the domains link there and then open that up in a new tab. And then it's gonna bring you into the referring domains report for that specific URL. Now this URL started with the 92, but you can see we're gonna add a few different filters on here to drill in and narrow this down a little bit more. So the first thing we wanna focus on is only those do follow links. Then I like to set a domain rating filter a minimum of 30. And this is just gonna help trim off a lot of those really low quality domains that aren't really gonna have a big impact on rankings anyway. And then finally, I'll add a domain traffic filter and I'll just set this to be anything from one because what I really wanna do is just eliminate any sites that have artificially high domain rating scores that aren't driving any traffic. Those are typically gonna be also low quality quality sites that aren't gonna have a big bearing on rankings anyway. And after applying those different filters, you can see that number went from 92 down to 23 domains. So you can see back here, it was saying it had 92 domains, but really I'm only focusing in now on 23 of those. So that's a much more manageable number. Next, and this is an optional step, but what I like to do once I've trimmed down this list is skim over the remaining list of referring domains and just make a mental note of any that are topically irrelevant because I like to subtract any of those from this target at the top here. But I can see skimming down this list here, most of these domains are either SaaS websites or in the marketing agency space. So they do seem like they're all pretty topically relevant. So I'm not gonna eliminate any here, but if I did notice that there was a few that were just really off base, I would eliminate that number and adjust the, the target number up top here. And another important observation and that you wanna make here is looking at the domain rating distribution buckets that the links are in. And this is gonna help you assess the quality of links that you need. Do you need a lot of really high authority links? Is it okay to build some maybe mid-tier links? So I can see here that Marketing Arsenal has eight DR80 plus links and another nine in the DR70 to 79 range. And these are all from quality domains. So it's gonna be very challenging to replicate this link profile. Not impossible, but it's just gonna take a while to close this gap. Now for really high priority assets, you're also gonna to wanna to gauge how many backlinks you might need to build on a monthly basis, for example, to stay competitive. And to calculate this, what you can do is you can come up here and just set this new backlinks filter. And I can see here that in the 
the last 30 days, Marketing Arsenal has generated no new referring domains or backlinks to this asset that meet these thresholds or filters that we just applied. Now you can go, okay, well now what does it look like over the last 90 days? I can see they've got a few links in here. And then if I expand this out to six months, I can see now they've got four links showing up. So this is really helpful information. Now, as I know that I'm not gonna need to build out a ton of links on an ongoing basis, I'll likely just need to build around 20 links to close that gap. And then maybe one or two more links each quarter just to remain competitive for that keyword. Another quick example here to illustrate this is my enterprise SEO tools post. I can see here I'm ranking down in position nine. Again, my domain rating at the time of this recording is 70. So if I look up here into the number four position, I can see there's this site called Plurdy and they have a domain rating of 71, which is pretty much the same as mine. Now, if I look across here, I can see that it's saying they have only three referring domains pointing to it. And if I right click on that, open up the referring domains report, apply those same filters, it trims it down to two. So I can see there's two referring domains pointing to that URL that are in the DR70 range. And same thing, I could click in and just see how those links are being generated. And when I compare that to my article, there's seven domains showing here, but all of them seem to be pretty topically irrelevant or low quality domains. And this is not surprising because I haven't really done any proactive link building for this article. So these are just links that have organically popped up over time. So now given that insight, I can feel pretty confident that with a content refresh on this enterprise SEO tools post and a couple DR70 plus backlinks, I could move this back into the top five positions. And if we come back over to the SERP overview report, this is showing I'm getting around 80 organic visits a month. But if I could move it in the top five, I could potentially triple or even quadruple the traffic going to that article. So then I'll just go through and repeat this process for all of my high priority content assets. And often you're just going to find that you really only need a few quality topically relevant domains in order to rank higher on page one or else equal. Now, one final tip here before we leave, if you want to quickly prioritize where you direct your link building efforts, I recommend that you either use subfolded filters or keyword modifiers to narrow in your focus. And a couple quick examples of this, if we look at a site like Beardbrand, all of their product pages are housed inside of this product subfolder. So I could come into the HS site Explorer, only look at all of the URLs driving traffic within that product subfolder. And then I'm going to see all of the top keywords for those pages. So what I can then do just like we did there is I can right click, open up the SERP overview report for that keyword, and then repeat that process. And now if you don't have all of your content organized by subfolders, what you can do is use keyword modifiers. So an example of this for my site is I could come in and come to the top pages report. And then I can say, okay, I want to first look at all of my highest priority assets that are on the middle or bottom of page one that might need some additional backlinks built to them. So I'd set a position filter of four to 10. And then in my case, an affiliate site, I know the most important assets are going to be things like the best tools or best software or software alternative competitor type articles. So I would just add in keyword modifiers like best tools, software alternatives and apply that. And now I can see 13 pages that are all ranking on page one already that may need some additional backlinks and a content refresh, just like with the previous example examples to move them up higher. And these are going to be the highest priority assets for my link building efforts. So this is where I would start in this case. So now you can go and take this process, repeat it for your most important assets, and you're going to have a more informed idea of the number and quality of backlinks that you need to rank your money keywords, as well as some insights into the possible strategies you could use to build those links. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the like button. And if you'd like more advanced training, check out my course, the SEO playbook, which is linked in the description below this video. See you in the next one.